So once we record Pope, this becomes telepathic. This means That's... it's not psychic. It's not uh, any big... kind of communication that can be interfered with or distorted by any negative nature. Does he still need to have it interpreted? No, 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 no need. No, I told him to get ready to close eyes and go on the journey. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. There's a simple reason why we close our eyes. But people on Earth do not yet know is that when you close your eyes, another inner vision begins to open. It's the same one that opens when you put the body to sleep at night. At that point, people put their body in what is called the trance state. This means the pineal gland in the center of the brain, which is how you run that body as an atma, not a body. You're a spherical energy being. It causes the pineal gland to secrete serotonin, which makes melatonin, which creates sleep, but it really puts the body on automatic so you can leave it. People are not taught this on earth. They don't grow up with it. They imagine going to the store, the beach, on an airplane, and they, then their body follows. Daydreaming that everybody knows how to do on earth is what people know how to do, but they don't know how to use it to focus out there among the stars or into higher realities where they came from. So they don't go anywhere. And most people identify with the sleeping body so they come back to that body in the morning unconscious because the body doesn't know anything while it's sleeping. We close our eyes because it shuts off all negative energy that's stored in the atmosphere of Earth. And it opens up that doorway through the pineal gland. That's part of my voice and what it does. And it's part of the beings I will introduce you to out in space, outside of Earth's atmosphere, so that we are outside of that negative influence. The reason these two beings will stand beside you, Shanti all and Tonalty all are their names. They're men and women, a couple. They are not from Earth. They're part of the Galactic Alliance. They're considered master teachers. And I will quickly describe them for you since it's, this is one-on-one. -on -one. So you'll have a visual understanding and it, when you close, as your eyes are closed, you should be able to see them. Remember, this is just like, how easy is it for you to imagine going to your local store, getting in a car and going somewhere? Pick a place, it's easy. And then your body gets in the car and you follow. In this case, you're using the same ability to see these two standing beside you. It is exactly the same. Shantiel and Tonalty are from beyond the Pleiades and are Galactic Alliance personnel. So you don't want to think of them as extraterrestrial because you came from the stars yourself. People don't realize this on Earth, but they're all extraterrestrial. There's not a single race that evolved on Earth originally. They were brought here. That goes back 65 million years since the big dinosaurs were deliberately made extinct. There's a missing history in people. The implants, which are terror and fear-based, are subconscious. And so that influences people's decision-making on Earth to never recover knowing what they knew before they were born. These, this journey and its purpose is to help you recover what you were made to forget. And these things have to go. They both appear to be 35 years old in appearance. He would be in equivalent about 368 Earth years old. She's about 256 Earth years old, probably maybe years older than that now, since I first started introducing them to people. But remember, they do not revolve on a planet like Earth. They don't have a 365 day period to go around the sun where they come from. It's quite different in every way. He has long blonde hair and robin's egg blue eyes, slightly larger than Earth humans. She has long brunette hair and emerald green eyes, slightly larger than an Earth human. Just... 
The removal of implants cannot be done by the individual themselves because they've been made to forget that it was done. They've been made to forget where it was done and how it was done. So they can't possibly remove them. This requires the kind assistance of advanced beings from other worlds who come here to help people be free of this stuff because they do not have subconscious minds. They were never implanted. They never were born on Earth. They're human, but they're more advanced than people on Earth. They have four stranded DNA instead of two. The telomeres on their DNA and the end of the DNAs do not shrink when their cells divide like they do with people on Earth, which is what aging is. So these are the people qualified to do this work, but only after we're out of the side of Earth's atmosphere, because there we're plugged into the primary first sound, the first power that supports all the multidimensional creation, the hue, the first half of the word human, hidden in plain sight. When we send out the hue as I'm about to do, then that opens a conduit, a doorway. And it's done by other beings who do this with me and are waiting for us outside of Earth's atmosphere in the pure hue. That black area in space that you see in a Hubble Space Telescope image of galaxies and stars is not really black. It's just that Earth human eyes cannot see into a high enough frequency to see it. So it appears black. To us out of body, meaning the real you, it's going to put that body in an automatic state called sleep, listening to my voice, and then we're going to go out consciously and go get this secondary implant stuff taken care of. I'll begin these tones, and they're going to raise the vibration significantly that passes down through your body and out into your room. Shantiel and Tonal Tiel are standing beside you, and you look up at the ceiling this is not with your physical eyes. You find out that you are looking from the ceiling down on your body. Same as if you would imagine going to the store. And then you see it sitting there with the eyes closed. And you look left and right and there are two spherical luminous beings that look like the front cover of the Emerald Doorway book. Spherical. It has structure and shape. It is not made of matter or DNA. It isn't nuclear material. It is the energy behind and supporting that, which is what makes us up as individuals. There's no negative nature in the Atma, you. All that is surrounding you in the electromagnetic field. There never is an implant in an Atma. Implants cannot be put in Atmas, but they can be manipulated in place in the way outside of the Atma. When you try to look out into the cosmos and remember things, you might get something like, subconsciously, don't go there, we'll kill you and eat you again. Secondary implants contain such things, but they're programs. They weren't your experiences. In fact, they cover up really wondrous lifetimes of experience. They're randomly selected, particularly to be without negativity in them because that represents a higher intelligence and higher comprehending ability. So once those are gone, then you'll have access to that. You'll be able to bring some more of that back to Earth, to your life here. They are showing you these two bodies standing in front of the spherical Atma. You're between them, and you're showing them the same thing. About 36, Flawlessly handsome, perfectly built, about 36. And that's how you really look when you show yourselves, show yourself to others. This is something all Atmas know how to do. Fear keeps them from being aware of it, that's all. So these two standing beside you, hovering beside you, are there to shut down your secondary and primary implants. They keep them off. So you can go on this journey and gain great benefit. And then we'll go through the process of removing these implants 
so you can have access to at least to parts of these wondrous three lives. And I wish I could do this for everyone, but frankly speaking, it's not practical to take the time to show everybody on earth three lives in these journeys. I wouldn't have enough time in a thousand years to do that. So we're moving everything towards group guided secondary implant removal journeys. During this journey, Shantiol and Tonal Tiol will be doing the implant removal session. My part is to guide you out to see things visually, to remember what you can't see on your own yet. And then a couple will be assigned to you during this journey just as trained as they are. There are literally several billion of them. They're getting prepared to be assigned to each man, woman, child, and person on Earth. It takes a practical approach to set free a planet so backward, so unconscious, as the beings on planet Earth are. Basically, the problem is, people on Earth are making decisions based on some kind of subconsciously influenced fear. And this misdirects their thinking. We are not meant to have subconscious minds at all. The beings we work with do not. This is why I say you, uh, implants cannot be removed on Earth or by people on Earth who have subconscious minds. This is not possible. I have a subconscious mind. They can't be removed from me either. It would kill the body. They're very diabolical. So knowing what's in it frees you from being affected by it. The removal of the subconscious mind altogether takes place at a later time when you co-create it. This becomes up to you and is your choice. I'll begin these tones to connect us to friends from out of town, from off world. You. You are three atmas hovering near the ceiling, three physical looking forms all about the same age, perfectly handsome, perfectly beautiful, Chantel and Tonal Till and you. This is what we always do when we're meeting each other without the effect of fear. They're pointing upwards and you find yourself at 10,000 meters in the atmosphere. They're still hovering beside you. You can look down right through the roof of your home and see that all three of you are still hovering near the ceiling. We're in both places simultaneously because the Atma, the spherical being, you, is multidimensional capable. We always have been. And the next moment you find yourself in space, standing in a circle of beings with the earth in the distance with its polar ice caps, its oceans and land, the barren moon, it orbits the planet, does not turn on its axis, always shows the same face to Earth people. Pockmarked with meteor craters, no atmosphere to speak of. 
the sun in the distance, and when you look in space from here, everything appears to be a white golden light everywhere. It is not black. The vast area of the hue, the omnipresent power, the intelligence itself that supports billions of these little galaxies that float in it also supports us. And we support it as well. Torellian, who's standing in the center of this circle of beings, is 18 feet tall. He's showing you a physical form that looks like that. He has long blonde hair, slightly wavy down to his shoulders. Bigger eyes than a human, beautiful big blue eyes, slightly pointed ears. Kind of a white gown on to his bare ankles. There's an Atma, a very bright, beautiful Atma like us, hovering above him. This form he's showing you. The Ceres immortalized their body over a billion Earth years ago by breaking down the structure of the DNA, storing it in one of the teardrops near the, close to the white core, and then they move around free without the burden of pushing a body around, feeding it, or taking it to the bathroom. The body form he's showing you here is like the one you show him. It's made of pure energy that looks human. It is a projection from the white core, spherical center of each atma. You are standing in a circle, off to the left, and on each side of you is Shantial and Tonaltial. They're taller than you. I've described their appearance and they're just standing there. And they're keeping your, what are called secondary and primary implants turned off. So you can experience this as if you always knew it. Perry's off to the left a little further towards the earth. She has another couple beside her. Part of her guides, part of her co-creative friendships. I am off to your right side, and I have Don Tim and Lam Tim beside me. So there are many beings that are going to be introduced to people on Earth at some point. A couple per each person to help them recover what they were made to forget or terrorized to remember, really. Further out away from my to my right is Master Opelum, with his pale blue skin, jet black hair to his shoulders, emerald green eyes. He's about six feet tall. He's wearing a thin blue-gray form-fitting bodysuit with a Galactic Alliance symbol on the chest. He's showing his right hand up, so you understand he has little webs between his fingers. This is his neck. There's little three little slits parallel. You can't even see them unless he lifts his neck. This race of humans, far more advanced than people on Earth, developed with the ability to swim and breathe underwater or on land. Opelum is showing you a physical looking form that looks to be about 40. But he has this actual body, this age, on Oceana, which is a planet on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy, mostly water covered. The body he's showing you on that planet is over 500,000 years old, unaged. That is a different type of immortalization. That's just more advanced science where they understand certain sound frequencies can turn on the telomere on their four-stranded their DNA and keep them from shrinking when cells divide so they do not age. And Ramu is standing over by Earth in that circle of beings around Torellian with his maroon robe and his simple sandals and a rope for a belt, swarthy skin, kind of a dark brown skin with coal black eyes, short cropped curly black hair and beard holding a crystal staff about six foot tall. Looks like quartz, it's glowing with gold like and crested what in ancient Egypt was the sign for or symbol for eternal life. It's a cross with a vertical oval hole above it. It's a device 
And since he's showing you an energy form that looks like him, the actual staff and body are back on Earth in a place called Agam Des. And that is in the Himalayan-like mountains, but not in the Himalayas on Earth. It is in a higher parallel dimension of an Earth in mountains there on a huge continent that expands from the left to the right horizon. He is a master teacher. Etta and Din are hovering above Torellian's spherical being, with their tails glowing about three feet long, standing upright on their hind legs with glowing tails. Cute, adorable, I love them. Known them for over 100,000 years. They're master teachers. There's an atma hovering above them both. They come from the same planet as Master Opelum, Oceana. Further up, high in space, is a being named Satnam. It means first sound, true name. First personification anyone will see in a human type form. The form he's showing you looks human, but it is not. It is energy. And above him is an even brighter, larger atma than we are. And up above him is a vortex, like an hourglass. Golden white light spinning clockwise with a blue-green water, blue water-like light whirling around it slowly, but it isn't water. Now this is a doorway between the physical space of Earth and above and beyond what people call the void. So he's bringing a higher energy down here, a higher form of the hue that's passing down through Ambassador Torellian through his two closed fists with his thumbs up. There's a golden white light around his thumbs like a halo and it's moving through all of us in a circle of beings. Shantiel and Tonaltiel are turning you towards space between the Earth and the Moon. They're doing this so that you, with this physical-like form that has eyes, doesn't get cold, doesn't get radiation from the sun, doesn't have to breathe, it's energy. But it can see and detect, objectively see what's going to take place to the spherical being you are, the Atma, which is hovering above you. When you look at the electromagnetic field that surrounds the planet Earth, from the southern pole to the north, it's a huge field of glowing golden energy that surrounds the outside of the outer layer of the Atma. It is not in the Atma. There are no implants in you. They're out in that electromagnetic field. It is identical in appearance to the one that surrounds the Earth, the one that surrounds you, and the one that surrounds your body back on Earth. It isn't a aura colors of a few colors of light near your body, as most people think. It's a big field of energy that's duplicate to the one that surrounds the Atma. Implants are in both. So they affect the nervous system of people on Earth to not look where they should be looking to remember what they were made to forget, so to speak. Since yours are turned off, you can comprehend and see all of this. When you look up into this field of energy, you can see there are three white oval lights, about a foot wide, like a football. And there's a white connected light that happens to be turned off at this point, but it's a white kind of looking light. It's in a triangular position around the outside of the Atma. There are three. And they're moving you shoulder to shoulder, moving this physical form up into that field of energy. It's two thirds of the way out in space, away from the outer golden or, or outer layer of the Atma. And they're moving you right into the hue which is a form of the pure hue that creates an electromagnetic field. So a planet or a moon or suns or stars or galaxies can float in this other pure, non-nuclear, non-atomic energy, which is the area of space that appears black, but it isn't. The more advanced races know how to work with that non-nuclear energy so they can get around galaxies and faster than the speed of light and all kinds of things because they've learned how to work with it. People on Earth do not know how to do that yet. They do understand that it is a non-nuclear powerful energy, 
They call it a toroidal energy or zero point energy, the energy of the universe. And that's scientists on Earth today, quantum physicists, astrophysicists, they understand there's some kind of energy out there. It's not like dark matter like they used to think. It is also the medium through which people pray. Well, that's not the best way to communicate with it. The way to communicate with that one power is to imagine in it, to see things. If you want to go to another planet, you remember or recall what it looks like. And then the omnipresent power takes you there. We're made of the same energy as source itself, prime creator. This cannot be changed. This is who we are. Bodies can come and go, but we can never be destroyed. So it's obviously beneficial for a person to know what they are and how to move it around the multidimensional creation because freedom is all wrapped up in that. With that kind of freedom comes total responsibility as well. This just means that we awake enough to know how to use our imagination, our ability to see into the universe in ways that are only constructive and uplifting and beneficial to ourselves and all life. Out here, this truth, which you've always known, but maybe couldn't quite make conscious, is awake now. It cannot be reversed. The energy we're plugging to out here isn't the hue in space. It's a higher form of pure positive hue from above the void. It's like a connection we make with source itself. So they're moving you up to this one to the left of that electromagnetic field out there. And they're putting their two hands, palms up right in it, moving it out and bringing it up to your face, this energy face that looks human. And you start moving your face into it because the secondary implants are turned off. This link between these three is turned off. What we want to see is what's hidden behind it. So as you move into this, you realize that you are now just walking up out of a blue, luminous ocean. The ocean's glowing a foot above the ocean. It's calm. It's as vast as you can see in every direction. You seem to be on the edge of a landmass that if you look down the beach to the left and right, it goes on for as far as you can see. And it has a yellow glowing sand on it. These things are charged with the hue. H2O water has many secrets that are just being discovered on Earth today. The ocean is predominantly what makes up planet Earth's surface. It is a telepathic medium. It's something that if it were charged and glowing like it should be on a normal planet, none of us would be having this need for these journeys. No one would have a subconscious mind. Normal worlds Water on normal worlds glow. Earth's oceans are depleted, except near the equator. So they don't glow. And people are left without enough energy to really recover. So when I say we need help from friends from out of town, from other worlds, who are in the greater God that do not have this problem, I'm being very, very correct about stating this. We cannot remove implants ourselves. How can you remove something you don't even know is there? And if you saw it, it's so pretty, like these oval white spheres of light, why would you want to get rid of it? See the problem? You have to be able to see what they are objectively without any negative influence. This is where Shantiol and Tomatiol come into this. You're moving down through this well, you're actually coming up out of this ocean, walking up and standing on this glistening, luminous yellow sand. When you look behind you, there are no islands out there. It's just a vast ocean. When you look up, you can see three suns in the daytime sky. One is a big blue, hot, white, giant one, relatively large compared to what we see in Earth's sun sky. And there's another blue one smaller behind it. 
and a smaller yellow one behind that. It's a trinary sun system. On Earth today, we're both advanced uh, communications and satellites and Hubble telescope and even ones more advanced than that, they found that most of the suns and stars in the Milky Way galaxy are binary, meaning two, or trinary, meaning three. Earth only has one. Our nearest sun to our sun has two. It's binary. The effect this has on people evolved on those planets is quite different than one sun as an effect on people on Earth. The populated planets are usually much larger than Earth, like this one. And the oceans are charged. That's because the beings who visit these worlds or who live here know what they are. They know they're not a physical body. You're coming up out of this ocean, you know you can see the atma you are hovering above it. You're aware of it in that lifetime, way back then. And your body is blue, pale blue. It's an Oceanan body. There are many Oceanans in the Galactic Alliance, not just one or two. That's made up of 450 million space spring world systems, the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds. This is one of the worlds that the Oceanan people have colonized. And it's located out across the galaxy in the third higher parallel dimension of the physical universe. That means there's 144 parallel dimensions of matter in different molecular time rates stacked one on top of the other before we even get to what people call the astral plane. It's just big. The Galactic Alliance can traverse in craft between all 144. They do not go into the astral. So they have world relationships on all those levels. You can imagine how much people on Earth need to recover to know this stuff. The awakened Atma without fear, you, can comprehend all of this. When you're suffering from subconscious fear, you can't access the higher faculties that make this possible. You have jet black hair to your shoulders, kind of like Opelum. Emerald green eyes. And then several other people start walking up out of the ocean and stand beside you. One is a more advanced ocean and master teacher. In this case, it's Master Opelum himself. Another one is a scientist named Dom. They're both from Oceana, from a central planet. And here you are. And you look to be about 27, maybe. Opelum looks to be about 40-ish. Perfectly healthy, though, flawless. And Dom looks to be thin, about his height, both a little taller than you. And these are very advanced beings. This is 376,000 Earth years ago. And this is just one of your experiences in training in a higher level of science with these two. There are dome cities on the bottom of the ocean on this planet. It is not Oceana. It's called Telenolan. Telenolan. One of many world systems that the Oceanans oversee as part of the Galactic Alliance. One of two races have the highest crystalline form of science developed in the universe the Oceanans and the Zientronomos, and they're on the other side of the galaxy. Master Opelum was considered a master teacher then, and he's holding up a crystal wand device, and he's showing you a spherical holographic image, and in it, 
is he's showing you actually at that time a planet called Earth in the middle of it. Something you would have a destiny with someday but not in the way you ended up here. That was never intended. Earth doesn't look the same then. The continental drift, there's things that are different in shapes and characteristics. At that time, there were no polar ice caps on Earth. The moon was alive, had an oxygen atmosphere. It was different. Oceanian scientists are very advanced in communicating with atlas running mammalian life under the ocean, people above the ocean, and other dimensions. And they're quite astute. Opelum, who's standing there by you, was the sponsoring founder of the entire Galactic Interdimensional Alliance for Free Worlds over 500,000 years ago. You look in the distance beyond this yellow luminous sand and you see this big landmass back there, huge mountain range extending over the horizon. There are five or six dome cities in two triangular formations in clearings. The jungle trees surrounding them are taller than trees on Earth, but they have a glow around them because the water in them is charged. The beings who are responsible for being custodians and caretakers of such worlds, know how to keep that charge coming through them. So they're walking through this pure field of positive energy all the time. When you come out of that white sphere, and Chantal and Tonalty are standing beside you, you're gonna see them start to spin it with their forefingers in a circle until it just breaks apart and disintegrates into the white golden light around us. That oval sphere is disintegrated. These little beams of light that were turned off, you just see like a white shadow of a light, are gone. This memory of this life remains. They awake in one of the teardrops of the Atma that's hovering above your body back on Earth and hovering out here above a body that's made of pure energy. The sound you hear around you out in space here sounds like gentle rumbling thunder, no lightning. It's not frightening, it's uplifting. When you look up above Sat Nam through that vortex, there's the sound of a high note of a flute playing this beautiful melody. It's very alluring, attractive to you because you originally came from beyond that void, far beyond it. And these are the kinds of things you begin to remember out here. And they're moving you over to the one on the right side of the electromagnetic field, two thirds of the way out away from the outer layer of the Atma. And they're bringing you right up to it. They're placing their masculine and feminine hands, palms up under it, bring it into your face so you're being taken into the experience. You are in a Galactic Alliance spacecraft. It is a scout craft about 30 feet in diameter. And you're inside and the hull of the craft has been charged so that you can see uh, maybe a four foot section, 360 degrees right outside the craft. It becomes transparent. This would be very disoriented for a person on Earth to fly through the air like this. It's surrounded by a blue anti-gravitic light, three semi-spheric pods on the bottom. And there, you're aboard this ship sitting in a pilot's chair behind a control console. It's curved with multifaceted luminous crystal controls. You get an idea of what this looks like from looking at the illustration of Caleb's ship inside the Emerald Doorway book. And it's like that, a little more modern, a little more, that was 100,000 years ago, but this is similar. And you are looking at, down at this craft, there's a dozen other personnel aboard, 
little cramped for normally for a Galactic Alliance scout, but they're standing behind the control console around you, and you're moving down through the atmosphere, and there is a spaceport below you. You're looking at a world that has also a trinary sun system. This is a big yellow one, much bigger than Earth, and a bit smaller yellow one and a little blue one, very young white hot star. And so it has four planets circling around this larger sphere. There are no polar ice caps on any of them. It's a trinary sun system. As you move down in the atmosphere of this planet, you begin to see flying beside the ship because you're moving very slow, deliberately, these beautiful bird-like people. They have legs and arms and big sets of wings. They have a greenish purple skin, beautiful red and pink eyes. And they're looking at you flying horizontal next to the ship all around you. This is the race of people that normally live here. You can't think of them as birds or animals because you can see the Atma hovering above each one of them. So you're coming here with a group of scientists from another world to this being's world, and they are very advanced scientists, these people. All the Galactic Alliance personnel are cross-trained to fly a ship. They're trained in botany and biology and um, interdimensional physics and wormhole physics and and anti-gravitic technology. Any one of those 12 people could sit down and fly that ship that you happen to be the pilot this day. You are wearing a thin blue gray uniform, has the silver galaxy on the right chest area, four-sided golden-sided pyramid with a quartz top, three blue stars and triangular formation above it. And then the ship is circling down towards, it looks like a big dome covering three sets of three pyramids in triangle formation. It's a very big city complex. And there are transport tubes going out away from it, out to three islands, and then going inland around and between these mountain ranges to dome cities you see in the distance. You're coming down and there are landing pads that are blue-like disc shaped about a foot thick and this ship is coming down and landing in the central one and then the ship turns off a seam appears in the side these crystal like stairs unveil down to the floor and it has a blue marble stone floor you're all getting out and walking towards a fountain it's one of a dozen fountains that surround the outside of this big dome each one of those fountains has a different color blue, green, yellow, red, orange. They break down the spectrum of white and concentrate it. When you look up above this dome, you can see there is a shaft of white golden light coming down at the center of the dome into a bigger fountain in the middle of the dome itself. There's an identical one of the same color of white golden light right in front of this group of people. You stand around it and you place your hand over your chest and nod. And what you're doing is connecting into an energy field that is being brought from a much higher reality down into this fountain. So this is H2O, but it is glowing water. Each of you walk up to this fountain and there's a little golden cup around this fountain on hooks. It's similar to the one that's up in the Atma plane. And this is a very advanced world system. These bird-like people that are flying land on the ground next to you and stand in between each one of you, alternating male and female. They do the same thing. They have these these beautiful long fingers, they have little talons on the end, but they have fingers like a person and thumb and toes. They're very advanced. They have say raised DNA in them, just like you do. Then you're gonna watch a stream of this water come up out of the fountain 
enter the top of your heads, go down into your body and make it glow a little brighter, and it goes up through the top of your head. You look up, it goes into the white core of the being you are as Atmos, all of you. And then you turn, embrace one another, and you begin to have a telepathic conversation about sharing science between these master biologists and botanists and bird people and the Galactic Alliance that works in other areas. You find yourself now out in space coming out of that little white sphere. And Shanti all is now taking his finger and flicking it and laughing. And it knocks this sphere out in space and it disintegrates and becomes part of the white golden light. Now, this lifetime on that planet. It was a long time ago. Not that far, 250 some thousand years ago. There was no war in the galaxy. This was a beautiful lifetime. There was no evil. You lived about 8,000 years there before you voluntarily left that body and disintegrated, moved on elsewhere. You didn't get caught on Earth till much, much later, of course. But everyone on Earth has got caught that way, so you can't feel alone. And they're moving you around to the backside of the electromagnetic field that surrounds outside the Atma you are. Chantel and Tonal Teal are still giggling because when they do this, it's very uplifting for them. Et and din, drens, silica base, not carbon, obviously knew you as an oceanan and knew of you. So they're flying down to hover beside each of your shoulders, just behind your back and behind Chantiel and Tomtiel. This time, they're placing their palms up under your palms and you're moving your hands in so that you are co-creatively part of moving this last one out. Then you bring it up to your own face to go into the experience. As you move down through a cloud cover, it looks to be about like a, a very pale pink and blue. And you see off over the top of the atmosphere, this is a binary sun system. That means two suns. You're coming down over a planet that's probably five times bigger than Earth in this case. It has five worlds circling it, all of which have oxygen atmosphere and no polar ice caps. And you can see in the distance that this is a, a big blue, hot, white, young star and a smaller yellow one. And as you move through the cloud cover, you're coming down into a planet. You're coming down into a planet that's located on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy and it's part of what's called the Zeantranamon or Zeantranamus race world systems. They govern or oversee a little more than half of the Milky Way galaxy. They work in complete harmony with the Galactic Alliance these days. So there is no war taking place out there at all. This planet's called Zion Trossel. Zion Trossel. It just, I just think it means radiant splendor, or radiant light, something like that. It's hard to describe. And it is located among the many hundreds of millions of world systems that are overseen by the Zeantranamon race. This lifetime you're coming into to review here is three and a half million years ago. 
before the Galactic Alliance was formed, although there were many harmonized world systems working together at that time. When you find yourself down on the ground, you're walking along a violet, along a path that's like a glowing green grass next to an almost violet glowing river. And it's heading off in the distance towards a, uh, an ocean. There's an island in the middle, big white sand, glowing sand around it that's in, just inside the water. And then there's two bays. And you're walking along this glowing river out to this ocean, which has this same pale violet glowing light a foot above it. And you realize that you're an atma running a body. This body is 10 feet tall. It is male. It looks to be about 36. Has silver hair like silver metal to your shoulders. Violet eyes. Obviously the water here is charged that, so the eyes become this way as well. You have longer fingers and toes and arms and a neck than people on Earth. But when you walk, you walk like a swan, elegantly. You're walking up to the two leaders of this entire world system. They're approaching you. They're about your height. Zanantalus and Freshun Muntis are their names. They're very ancient, very advanced in crystalline-based technology like the Oceanas. The air, the H2O in the air of this world actually has a glow to it. So does your body have a glow around the ivory-colored skin like a moonstone. You're greeted by these two leaders and you are there after having come from a journey inland. And you're reporting to them about what you experienced because inland is a spaceport. You can see a big dome in the distance. There's a horseshoe shaped mountain range around it. And you just got back from visiting the Galactic Alliance central number of planetary systems before they were called that. And you're a scientist in this life as well. This planet is called Shefranin. It is one of millions of world systems. Three and a half million years ago is a long time. But you lived there for over 23,000 years before you left and went somewhere else. No negative nature in this life. Very much higher IQ. Much greater intelligence. A body that's virtually immortalized and that it doesn't age. When you come out of that last one, this time Shantiel and Tonaltiel are asking you to point your finger at it. This is a pure energy form that looks 36 like you, and they're doing the same. You see an energy come down from above Sat Nam, up through that vortex, down through Torellian, out through all of us, and right into this thing, and it just goes up in a bu purplish puff of powder and vanishes into the white golden light around us. Now the lifetime is available to you. The implants are gone. This process is done in such a way that you can never be implanted again. This is the good news. The primary implant is pyramidal shaped, four-sided, golden with a quartz cap, something you would love. It sits on the North Pole pointing up and the South Pole pointing down, not in the Atma, outside in the electromagnetic field. That cannot be removed at this time without killing your physical body. It's diabolical but it contains 
the awareness and memory of when you were killed or captured and how you ended up on earth with no memory. And when you're ready because of the advanced awareness you will now have, you'll be able to set up a time with Shantial and Tonaltial or those who they assign to you every night. It is recommended that every night before you put that body into the trance state called sleep back on earth, that you call upon Shantial and Tonaltial or their representatives and ask them to help you every night. All you do is send out the hue for maybe five minutes until you feel a kind of a glow inside, a peace. Ask for their assistance every night to help you recover all that you were made to forget. And then go to sleep without worrying about it, without caring whether you have an experience or not. Just let it go. And then do it regularly for a while and see what happens. Then you find yourself hovering above your body with Chantel and Tonal Cell beside you. Looking down on the body, you see the electromagnetic field around it. There are no implants in it. The primary implant still hovering above the north and southern poles of the Atma, but it is turned off. And you will find you have volitional control over this now. So you can choose to, out of habit, imagine things in fear of the present and future and good for your family, which are opposing forces that neutralize energy into the ground. You will find you can turn this primary implant off when you have fear of the present or future by you simply looking away from it, sending the hue into it, or looking at a hummingbird or a waterfall or anything beautiful, and you're going to find that it will just turn off. This is a great advantage. The hue this primary first sound, which comes from far above the void. We take people on journeys there in the group guided journeys, not the implant ones. Then we go up into the upper realities to begin to work in pure energy that has no negative nature where we came from. And we begin to bring that back through our bodies to earth. It rubs off on us. This energy is coming down through the roof of where you live, through Shantiel and Tonaltiel standing beside you still, through you, through that field of energy, through you for your benefit and on its way for the benefit of others. It goes out into Earth's atmosphere. It goes out into space. It goes through certain pyramid devices that are out between stars and on Earth. It goes into the galactic core and straight up the shaft of golden white light that runs up and down the center of the galaxy. It returns to source through you. It never stops moving. When you get into any difficulty, just remember, you are meant to be a trustworthy co-creator with the source behind all life. Everyone is. Go into the hue. Go to the website at paralleltime.com. Click on About Scott Hugh, play the recording of my voice in three-part harmony that's 24 minutes long, looped, and Hugh with it. It's free. When you're ready, open your eyes, Pope. Now, would you turn on your microphone, please? I had to turn it off to get a bit better resound recording quality. There we are. Yeah. Three. Very rare for now that we have the time to do this with a few people. I'm really grateful that we can because it'll make a big difference for you. A couple of days, play back this recording. When you got a cup of tea, no phone, won't be disturbed. You know, get a notebook out, go to the bathroom, go eat some food, take a break, go to lunch, come back. Play it through, and you're going to find that you have the ability to understand all of it as if you always knew it. It's the first sign you'll understand from this. Okay? Yes. Are we good? Any questions? That was pretty 
in my point of view, it was pretty fictional. It was quite fun story though. Mm. I'd yeah, like to write some stories. That's good. It might inspire stories, but it isn't yeah. fictional. It just takes place in space as an atma. Although you might think of it as fiction, that's your primary implant. Screw it with you, by the way. You know how to do this yeah. stuff. You see this out here, this thing behind my head. That's what you really yeah. look like. Everybody oh. talks about soul, but they don't know what it is, where it is, or what it looks like. It has structure. It's beautiful. When you, when you let this move through you, think of it this way. If I told you about stuff on Earth, what good would it do you? You already know what fictional stuff is on Earth. Has it helped you wake up at all? No. No. This stuff does. <laughs> You'll get this. Be patient with it. Go back and review it. And at some point, like most people do, you're going to be able to remember, you're going to be able to recall you're very familiar with those lifetimes. Just because you haven't been able to recall them for a very long time doesn't mean you weren't there. More evolved, more advanced than you are now on Earth. The beauty of that is you don't have to try to be some super evolved being in the infinite future. You already were one. You got to wake it up. Okay? I will try. Okay, that's good enough. I will say to you, see you lighter, onward and upward. Yeah, oh. so